Hi, I'm Claire McIntosh. Um, it's about two weeks before my first book is published. Um, it'll be out in ebook um, and also in Australia and New Zealand and Ireland and South Africa. We've got a little bit more to wait until the paperback comes out in April. But I thought I would whet your appetite a little bit um, ahead of the ebook publication date with a little reading, um, which I've not done before. So this is an extract um, from just that far in, so not uh, about 10 pages or so, it's uh, halfway through chapter 2, uh, and this is Jenna, who's the central character. When I wake, for a second I'm not sure what this feeling is. Everything is the same, and yet everything has changed. Then, before I've even opened my eyes, there's a rush of noise in my head, like an underground train. And there it is, playing out in technicolour scenes I can't pause or mute. I press the heels of my palms into my temples, as though I can make the images subside through brute force alone, but still they come, thick and fast, as if without them I might forget. On my bedside cabinet is the brass alarm clock Eve gave me when I went to university, because you'll never get to lectures otherwise, and I'm shocked to see it's 10.30 already. The pain in my hand has been overshadowed by a headache that blinds me if I move my head too fast, and as I peel myself from the bed, every muscle aches. I pull on yesterday's clothes and go into the garden without stopping to make a coffee, even though my mouth is so dry it's an effort to swallow. I can't find my shoes and the frost stings my feet as I make my way across the grass. The garden isn't, the garden isn't large, but winter is on its way, and by the time I reach the other side I can't feel my toes. The garden studio has been my sanctuary for the last five years. Little more than a shed to the casual observer, it's where I come to think, to work and to escape. The wooden floor is stained from the lumps of clay that drop from my wheel, firmly placed in the centre of the room where I can move around it and stand back to view my work with a critical eye. Three sides of the shed are lined with shelves on which I place my sculptures in an ordered chaos only I can understand. Works in progress here, fired but not painted, here, waiting to go to customers, here. Hundreds of separate pieces, yet if I shut my eyes, I can still feel the shape of each one beneath my fingers, the wetness of the clay on my palms. I take the key from its hiding place under the window ledge and open the door. It's worse than I thought. The floor lies unseen beneath a carpet of broken clay, rounded halves of pots ending abruptly in angry, jagged peaks. The wooden shelves are empty, my desk swept clear of work, and the tiny figurines on the window ledge are unrecognisable, crushed into shards that glisten in the sunlight. By the door lies a small statuette of a woman. I made her last year as part of a series of figures I produced for a shop in Clifton. I'd wanted to produce something real, something as far from perfection as it was possible to get, and yet for it still to be beautiful. I made ten women, each with their own distinctive curves, their own bumps and scars and imperfections. I based them on my mother, my sister, girls I taught at pottery class, women I saw walking in the park. This one is me. Loosely, and not so anyone would recognise, but nevertheless, me. Chest a little too flat, hips a little too narrow, feet a little too big, a tangle of hair twisted into the knot at the base of the neck. I bend down and pick her up. I had thought her intact, but as I touch her, the clay moves beneath my hands and I'm left with two broken pieces. I look at them, then I hurl them with all my strength towards the wall, where they shatter into tiny pieces that shower down onto my desk. I take a deep breath and let it slowly out. I'm not sure how many days have passed since the accident or how I've moved through the week when I feel as though I'm dragging my legs through treacle. I don't know what it is that makes me decide today is the day. But it is. I take only what will fit into my bag, knowing that if I don't go right now, I might not be able to leave at all. That's it. That's the extract from I Let You Go, which is out in ebook in a couple of weeks, 6th of November and paperback next year.